I've been using a lot of maps on D&D Beyond, the official Dungeons & Dragons VTT for my Dungeons & Dragons games. And I have some tips and tricks that I want to share with you. So let's get right into it. The first thing I want to talk about is the grouping tool. Now, here we have Dom the Druid, a little character that I created really quick. So if we go into our token browser and we go to companions and we pull up uh, what are Dom's uh, wild shapes. If you don't know how to do this, it's actually if you go to uh, any of your players go to their character sheet, you go over to extras, you are able to add uh, familiars, wild shapes, pets, things that might be following them around, compatriots, etc. And you're able to access this list directly in maps. So we go back to maps, we go to companions, and we're going to use one of his wild shapes. We're going to say he wants to switch over to a black bear or a brown bear. Brown bear works a little bit better because the token is a little bit of a larger size, but we can take Dom the Druid's token, put it right over the brown bear if we want, and then we can select these two and then group them together. So now they will move together in unison no matter where they want to go. They use an arrows to move up, to move right, whatever it might be they're grouped together. Another great useful way to use this is say you have a spell like, uh, we'll say Spirit Guardians or something that emanates from you. Now you're commonly gonna use an overlay for this. So say we have a 15 foot radius emanation focusing on Dom. So we can now select both of these and group them together. So now wherever Dom goes, the template goes that shows where his spell effect is taking effect. So if he moves over here, we know now the trant is in that radius and will take any of the damage that it is causing. And then you can just simply ungroup them when it goes away and delete your template. Another thing that I like to do is pre-making a lot of templates that I'm going to use in the game. So we'll pop over to another map for this. This is another uh, Dungeon Delves or Dragon Delves map. Um, this one is, uh, you can see on the left hand side, some templates. So these templates, this one is actually a template I use to see how far out they can see with dark vision. Uh, this is a 60 foot template. So if say, uh, the players start down here, we'll add Dom back in. There's Dom. Boop. Now, if it's night and it's pitch black out, I wanna see how far out Dom can see. I would take this template, I can throw it right over Dom, and I can see, he can see about that far out. I can then take my Fog of War tool, erase, get a big old circle going, and then just remove out to that distance. Again, we don't have any of the automatic lighting or Fog of War effects that you have in other VTTs. This is a very simple VTT, and that's one of the things that I love about it. Sometimes things take a little bit more time, but I just enjoy it in general. And then I would take my template, throw it over to the side, and that is about how much Dom can see. Also, I know that there are mages in this map. So I have a fireball template, and then this is the breath weapon for the black dragon in here. Now, commonly I will have other templates out here just to kind of confuse my players because they can see the templates that are available and they're free to use them as well. They know these templates exist if they don't want to draw something. It also, you can add a little flavor in the moment when you're running a game, even though it is incredibly quick and easy, it is very common for even me uh, to just take a circle overlay. It is a 20 foot radius. That's my fireball. Um, I might change the color on it. I might not change the color on it, but this way I can have the color changed. It adds a little pizzazz, a little fun to uh, the templates, but that is one thing that I do is pre-generate a lot of my templates, uh, usually outside of the map, or sometimes I will stick them in Fog of War if it is a ability that I don't want my players uh, to see. I've also started when I uh, generate maps or create maps, I will throw them and I will add a little sidebar to the map if I want to add things uh, or some dead space so that I can hide some things from my players because you can do that the same with character tokens. You can put them in the fog of war and then have your players not see them. Now, for this next tip, there are really two sides of the coin you can land on with this. This is one of the pre-generated maps for uh, Dragon Delves. Now, the this map comes preloaded with all of the different tokens for all of the different monsters on it. If you want to prep to this level, it is fine. There is a functionality in maps that doesn't really jive with this really well. 
So if we add Dom back in, and Dom is gonna take on all of these giants by himself. And I want to now go into our encounter. There is this button that says add all tokens. Now if I click add all tokens, it adds every single monster in the whole map. One button click, it's great. If you have a map that just has on it what you want to kind of deal with an attack, it's fine. The issue becomes, if you only want to have certain things in your initiative counter, this is not the way to go. Now, your players are not going to see hidden monsters. If you go over to, this is the player view, the spectator view, they don't show up on the initiative tracker. Only the monsters that have revealed themselves are going to show up in that initiative counter right here. So the only real pain in the butt part of this is you're going to have to click through all of these when you're going to players' turns. Too much for me. So what you have to do to build your encounters if you're going to prep whole maps is you just have to be ready to use groups. So if this is my encounter right here, and then we take our select tool, we take these, we are going to hide, we're gonna reveal everything, and then we can take all of these monsters, oh, end combat first, confirm, and then we can just add what's here to the encounter. Real simple, real easy. But your level of prep in a map is going to determine which one you kind of want to go with. If you want to use the add all tokens button and you kind of just go in there and you build your encounters really fast in front of your players, that's fine. I like to jump right into the action. I like having all the tokens here and I like just taking it, selecting them all, and sending them into the encounter builder. Because there, you click your auto initiative, and then boom, we are in combat. Everybody's in the, the combat encounter, and you're moving along. Now, if you're like me and you want to pre-build your maps like the, the uh, Dragon Delves maps, so this is my process for it. So we're going to go to the Gold Dragon's Lair. Uh, this is one of the maps that's available. It was one of the extra content packs for Dragon Delves. You get a bunch of Dragon Layers. So this is the one. So uh, we're gonna go to our token browser and now these are two buttons that I always check. Hide monsters not in the DM's content library and hide legacy monsters. There are a ton of monsters available on D&D Beyond, a ton. If you don't click these two buttons, there is going to be too many monsters if you are only using the 2024. There are certain monsters that I still use that are legacy content and I will hunt them out uh, and I will uncheck that box. But if I'm only using current content, these two I check almost immediately and then I will use the other filters to drop it down or just search. So since this is a gold dragon's lair, we're only gonna be using gold dragons. We have four gold dragons available to us, the wormling, adult, young, and then the ancient. So. We're definitely gonna have an ancient. We're gonna throw our ancient over here. This is just kind of my process for preparing these maps. Uh, we're gonna do that. We'll do a couple of youngs, and then we're gonna do a smattering of wormlings. So this is my gold dragon encounter. We have it up. I've put all of the tokens here uh, on my map. So what do I do with it now so that my player it is players ready. First, I'm going to select all my monsters and then I'm going to either hotkey this or just, I will show you with the buttons right here. Uh, we are going to hide all these monsters so I can reveal them when I want to. There's nothing worse than accidentally removing some uh, fog of war and revealing the surprise that's coming up. I'm going to lock these in place so that I don't accidentally move them into a spot uh, where my players can see them if I do unhide them first. I'm not going to group them and I'm not going to worry about the border color. So once I have that, I'm going to come over here, Fog of War. I'm going to cover uh, my whole map in Fog of War and then I'm going to uh, erase the Fog of War where my players are going to start so that I am not confused or anything. They're going to start down here on the beach. So I will reveal this little bit of beach where they rolled up on so that when I am coming to the map, my players already have a little spot that they can see, they know where they're approaching, and they can set themselves up right on the beach, or I can set them up for them. That is how I prep a map uh, for my games. Now, if you do want to use shortcuts, shortcuts are available right here. Um, again, the ones that we just used were lock, which is going to be shift L, and then toggle visibility, which would be shift H. Uh, I will use those commonly, but for this video, I did use the buttons because the buttons are more visual. One last thing, and this is a tip specifically for anybody using the Dragon Delves uh, quick start maps. Uh, if you don't know what size the map is, 
uh, there are a couple of ways to figure it out. So this one, Nakari's Lair, uh, doesn't have a key anywhere on it, so it doesn't say how big uh, one of the boxes is. You can use the tokens, which are going to give you a pretty good uh, uh, kind of gauge. Uh, also, if you click on any of the tokens and then you move it, uh, it will move in five foot increments. So you can see that is 510. The, so these squares are 10 foot squares. Uh, that is one way to do it. You can also use the ruler. It's a little bit less of a precise tool, um, but you can see that from one, from the center of one line to the other line, you're looking at about 10 feet. Uh, the other way you can do it, obviously, is uh, uh, adding a square overlay. You'll see that that is a 10 foot square. So that is ways that you can gauge how big a map is uh, without if it's one of the maps that you did not upload and set the size yourself. So without the key, we can tell that this is a 10 foot square. A couple quick and easy ways to do that. Last tip or trick, uh, right on the maps main page, this is where a lot of the information for maps is released. There aren't a lot of news articles that make it out about maps. So if you check, if you're logging into maps, just check the page, read it real quick to see if there are any changes. This is the looking ahead section. Uh, 3D dice are coming, being able to roll 3D dice and maps. Reveals, allowing the DMs to reveal custom art and handouts to players. The campaign console, create and manage your campaigns directly in maps. And then the rules assistant, ask rules questions and receive instant answers. And these are all uh, coming in hypothetically 2025, uh, which is very cool. So that was kind of my quick tips and tricks uh, on how I'm using maps and some of the things that I've learned along the way. So far, I really like maps. Uh, they're adding a lot of really great uh, content directly from the Wizards of Coast releases. You can see here uh, the quick play logo on the Dragon Delves maps, but we also have uh, the starter set, all the way Curse of Strahd, Quest from the Infinite Staircase, Vecna Eva Ruin, and even some of the smaller releases they've had, Uni and the Hunt for the Lost uh, Horn, as well as I believe there's the new, yep, Portalands Quest Goblin Trouble, uh, which is their new like starter adventure, I think is going to be highlighted in the new starter set coming out. So let me know if you guys are using maps in any way. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. I really haven't found any reason to hop to another yet for Dungeons and Dragons. I want to run Daggerheart, so I'm kind of currently searching for a VTT to run Daggerheart in. I'm leaning towards Foundry, but I think Roll20 might be something that I try. I'm going to be doing a cyberpunk red campaign uh, someone else is running uh, in Roll20. So I'm really wanting to use that as my experience uh, to kind of base if I want to go with Roll20 or Foundry on. So thanks for joining me today. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe for more great Dungeons and & Dragons and TTRPG content and more tips and tricks I learn along the way uh, to help you run your games better. Thanks. See you next time.